Okay, I'd like to call the October 15th, 2013 meeting of the Planning Board to order. The Board will consider tonight's agenda in the following order. Number one, approval of the minutes from September 17th. Number two, Old Hayfield Road, Private Road Review. Number three, 303 Ocean House Road, Site Plan Amendment. Number four, public comment on items not on tonight's agenda. And number five will be adjournment. So let's uh, go with the approval of the minutes. Uh, were there any comments, questions, Elaine? Yes, I uh, attempted to email some red line comments on the uh, minutes to the board, but apparently it would most people couldn't open the red line. I had a number of proposed changes, but the purpose of all of the changes was to make it clear that in my comments at the prior meeting on the old Hope Hayfield Road matter, I was not reaching a conclusion one way or other as to whether that property had easement rights. I was saying that we did not have any information in front of us, either in the document package or in the information that the applicant was providing to us to conclude that there were easement rights. And since this was not a numbered lot on a subdivision plan, um, it was my view that we didn't have, the applicant had not satisfied their burden to demonstrate right title and interest. So I've made several changes in order to clarify those comments. Um, what I would propose, since I don't think anyone else has had a chance to look at them, is that we would table the approval of the minutes, which in no way affects our consideration of the matter tonight, but simply table the approval of September minutes until our November meeting, and I would so move. Any a second or any second. second by Joe? Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all for tabling this motion. And oppose? And the motion will be tabled until our next meeting, November 5th. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is Old Hayfield Road, Private Road Review. Stephanie Boggs is proposing a private road to be constructed within the Paper Street off Elizabeth Road, located off Reef Road, to create access to a back lot located at the end of Elizabeth Road. The new private road would be named Old Hayfield Road. The plans will be reviewed for compliance with the private road standards in the subdivision ordinance under section 19-7-9B. The application will be addressed in the following format. There will be an introduction of the item to the board by the town planner, followed by a presentation by the applicant. Then the public is welcome to comment on completeness of the application. The board will then discuss whether sufficient information has been provided to consider the application. The public is then welcome back to comment on the merits of the application. This will be followed by a discussion from the board on the application, including a discussion on any possible site walk or a public hearing, and we'll conclude with a motion for the board to consider. Maureen, would you like to give the board an overview, please? Sure. The proposed lot has no frontage at this time on an accepted town road. And in order to make a lot buildable, there needs to be frontage or access of some kind. So the applicant has a couple of choices. One of them would be to propose a private access way. The private access way is limited to one lot, and therefore anything else that would try to access the private access way would need to come back to the board for upgrade to a private road. Because Elizabeth Road, now called Old Hayfield Road, does uh, pass in front of an existing lot of record, there's a good chance that it could have access to more than one lot. So the applicant is actually proposing a private road, um, which would mean that he could create access for his lot off of the road, and other lots could get access off of that road in the future. Uh, one of the things that came up at the last meeting was whether or not this lot has rights to use Elizabeth Road as a paper street. And at the last meeting, I stated that this lot was not part of the original subdivision. Uh, if you look at the original subdivision plan, this lot does not have a number, and it does not have meets and bounds, but I think it's easy to make the judgment that, in fact, the lot is part of the original subdivision. So I'd like to uh, reverse my earlier statement and suggest that, in fact, the lot does is included as part of the original Shore Acres subdivision. But I'm going to let the applicant um, speak further on that. Are there any questions? 
Okay. Would the applicant like to present to the board? There we go. Good evening, members of the board. I'm Bob Metcalf with Mitchell and Associates. Uh, pinch hitting for John Mitchell, who was uh, unable to attend this evening. Uh, here representing Stephanie Boggs and Stephan Meta, and also with me is Mary Cost again now from Bernstein Shore, who had provided the board with a letter of interpretation regarding the status of the lot and the right of way access. Um, I know the last time when John was here, he pretty much presented what the proposal was in terms of uh, the private uh, for the access road coming in off of Reef Road. Uh, I don't know how much additional detail the board wants in terms of us going through a complete presentation again. I can do that, or I can just basically bring you up the speed with, you know, where we are in terms of the documentation provided to you, plus Maureen's statement that uh, it is part of the original subdivision. Yeah. And I can respond to any of the staff comments that we received as well. It probably just um, bring us up to speed from the last time, the presentation. There were some changes that have been made. Any of those changes? You can address any outstanding, you can go to um, the letter from the town engineer. Okay, sure. Any outstanding items. Okay. Okay, Maureen, now I gotta ask for help. There we go. I just hit the wrong button, that's all. Um, I'll go to uh, Mr. Harding's letter. One of his points was in regards to the stormwater calculations and an update for the, uh, the stormwater runoff. As in our original submission indicated the amount of imper new impervious uh, and the flow heading down towards reef, which basically splits roughly around here where part of it is running back in this direction. The rest runs back towards the rear of the property. Uh, it is again a negligible amount of runoff. What we provided in terms of resubmission is to provide two small rain gardens at the end of where the drainage swale comes down along either side of the roadway for treatment of that uh, stormwater running down that direction. And that's, Mr. Harding seemed to be uh, comfortable with that as resolving that and also uh, satisfying the need to have any additional stormwater information provided. Uh, the other, one of the other items was in regards to having the drawing stamped by a main professional engineer. That will be done on the, the, the next submission. Um, the issue in terms of what had been raised is where we'd asked to be able to shift the road a little bit and the waiver for the grades for the immediate access in and then the steep gradients going in was because of the depth of ledge. That information was provided and Mr. Harding seems to be comfortable with the rationale for going with the steeper grades coming in as well as uh, for the next section going up towards the hill to, to minimize the amount of cut and also to preserve, and one of the, the critical things also was to preserve this group of mature oaks that are along the easterly side, which are important. So, uh, I think that there were very few comments that uh, were provided. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, at this point, though, I would like to open it up if anyone from the audience wants to talk about completeness and, and then we can ask any questions if we have any questions on completeness. Um, so I'm going to open this up for completeness. If anyone would like to discuss whether or not this application is complete. On completeness, not to the merits of the application, just towards completeness. I'll open it up again to the merits. If you have a question on whether or not this is complete, then I would ask you please then, yeah. And you do need, because this is a public sure. forum and recording, your name please and address. My name is Connie Pacillo. I'm at Three Reef Road. And um, I just wanted to understand better the right um, and standing that um, appears to be the case. I just don't, I, I'm not clear on how that all works is that it sounded as if they didn't have right title and um, to use this road and I just wanted to make sure that they do so that would be a question okay I'll make sure that gets answered thank you would anyone else like to talk to
Uh, good evening, Matthew Ham, Six Reef Road. Uh, we're in a butter to this proposal that the applicant has uh, filed. Um, we would like to ask a question on the, um, how do I say this? F uh, some sort of privacy fence uh, that would be potentially something that would be drawn up as part of this plan so that it would be included in the scope of the work. Um, if people come to our house, they'll see that this is very much in our backyard. We've talked to the applicant and there is a general agreement um, that we would want to do this, but we would like to see that it become part of this plan if it moves forward. Okay. That's it. Thank I'm you. sorry, I couldn't, didn't hear exactly what you wanted to see on the plan. Sure. Uh, the current scope does not include any sort of privacy fence or shrubbery that oh, would... Oh, privacy fence or shrubbery. Okay. Cor correct. And so we would just ask that that be included into the plan if it moves forward. We, as we said before, we have talked to, with the applicant um, and there's a general agreement that we would want to do this collectively. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you had a question. Where exactly does this privacy fence and shrubbery lie on the plan? It does not. That's, it, it does, there is nothing that's um, contained in the current scope of work that you see in front of you. No, the scope of B, is, is your it? Well, how about um, at this point, that, I don't know if that really falls under completeness as much as the first question fell under completeness. Um, we will be talking about the merits after we talk about completeness, and that is a good question. We should follow up. Um, if there's been a, a conversation already, maybe the applicant can talk about it and you'll have a chance to come back. Yes. Is, is it okay, Peter, if we hold that question for after completeness? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Anyone else about completeness? Okay, then I'm going to close the public hearing on completeness. And at this time, um, does the board have any questions on completeness? And I would like to answer that first one. But Elaine, yes. Um, I just wanted to make a comment on the issue of right title and interest, which I think is completeness. In part, I think it addresses your question. I would respectfully disagree with Maureen that this lot is a part of the subdivision. But I would agree that it is depicted on the subdivision plan. And I think that's a significant, that can have significant legal ramifications. And I think um, we have a legal opinion from the applicant's attorney. And I want to thank the applicant for going to the time and expense to get that opinion. Um, I think this is a sufficiently complicated case with a 1922, I think it is subdivision plan that that was necessary. I thank you for bringing it. Um, as a planning board, we don't determine easement rights or any other title rights, but the applicant is required to make a showing that those rights exist. The applicant has made that showing by presenting a legal opinion. I think for application purposes, that's sufficient for completeness. Whether or not I agree with that legal opinion is neither here nor there. Um, I think the applicant has made that showing, and absent anyone who comes in to contest that right title and interest, for our purposes, in my view, they have made a sufficient showing on that matter. So since that was my only concern with completeness, from my perspective, I think they've met that burden. So thank you for the expense I know you incurred to get that opinion. Thanks, Elaine. Anyone else on completeness or this issue of uh, right and standing? Yes, Eliza. Um, I have a question about the completeness checklist um, and whether it should include a road maintenance agreement. Since this is a private road that will be used, I think, by the hams because it would run over their existing asphalt driveway and then potentially by the um, other abutters, the Julianne Pryor Revocable Trust, and then the applicants, do we need to have a road maintenance agreement between the three potential users of the road? I believe they've submitted one. They are submitting one, or they did submit one? I believe it is in their application. I didn't see it in the checklist. Um, nope, you don't normally include it in the checklist. Okay. It's Exhibit 11. Okay, great. Thank you. 
don't have that with me. <laughs> thank you, though. Um, and then, w thank mm -hmm. you. And then one other question is, would it make sense for us to get a town attorney's legal opinion on this? Um, it's over my head legally. I, I understand the argument that the applicant's making. Whether that would hold in court is another issue. Maureen. I, I did not submit it to the applicant because uh, to our attorney for an opinion. Well, for a couple of reasons, but the main one is that um, it seemed that the language in the deed was pretty, um, like, pretty basic, and I didn't see a lot of doubt after the language in the deed explicitly said they had rights. However, if the if the, and, and because it seemed pretty basic, I figured I'd save that particular legal bill. However, if the planning board would like comments from a town attorney on this submission, I'd be happy to submit it to the, the, our, our attorney for their comments. Um, what do people think about that? Um, well, I, I, I looked at the deed, and I don't do this for a living, and it's not my area of expertise, but I was able to follow it back to 1911. So in my understanding it does seem to tie all the way back to the original shore acre plan um, do other people though wish to get an opinion from the town attorney because we have now two different opinions up here on whether it can be tied back i believe you're saying no it can be tied back or i no? i believe that they have made a sufficient showing and i also believe that it's not the town's business or our business to render legal opinions on title so I actually don't think it's appropriate to send it to our attorney. If another um, neighbor or anyone else comes up and makes a contrary argument, then on matters of title, we always conclude that the parties have to work it out themselves, and it's not the town's place to be rendering title opinions. So I think it's not an appropriate thing to send to our attorney. And I think they have made a sufficient showing. Okay. Anyone else who would like to comment? So, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll defer to the lawyers. The yeah, board. we do have two lawyers. I will also. So at this <laughs> time, I, and, <laughs> I hope that does answer the question. And so then, do we as a, do have a general agreement then that we are looking at this a complete application? Unless anyone has any other comments on complete, completeness? No? Okay, then we are going to say this is complete. Do I need to make a motion on this? Make a okay. Motion. Okay. Uh, Elaine, you'd like to make a motion on sure. completeness? Sure. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stephanie Boggs for a private road to be constructed within the paper street of Elizabeth Road, located off Reef Road, to create access to a back lot located at the end of Elizabeth Road, be deemed complete. We have a second. Uh, Eliza, second by Eliza, Elaine. And for completeness, everyone who's in favor? Opposed? Okay, we're all in a favor of that. All right, uh, okay. Okay, at this time then, um, we can now look at the uh, merits of this. Okay. Does anyone have any comments about the merits of the application? Public comments or for us? Uh, yeah, actually you're right, we should do public comments first. Any additional? Um, I know you spoke on completeness. Any additional? I, I'm opening it up for this. No? Okay. Then we did hear from um, Matt Ham then about fencing issues or shrubbery. Would the um, applicant or the applicant's representative like to um, address? Hi. Thank you. Yes, Stefan Mehta, the husband of Stephanie Boggs. Um, Mr. Ham, Matt and I have spoken, as well as Don, uh, about um, creating some um, means of allowance uh, for a privacy fence or shrubbery, and we uh, glad, gladly accommodate that. 
Uh, what John Mitchell and I spoke about was we didn't know for this application what the best way to do that it was provide a, an, an allowance or have something drawn on the application on the site plan, uh, a physical um, view screen or not. Uh, so not understanding what the best way to accommodate that request would be, we haven't included those in the plans, but we certainly wish to do so. Uh, wouldn't that be appropriate, Maureen, to include that onto the plans? I believe I heard Mr. Ham say he wanted it on the plan. Oh, and, okay. I mean, there are times when people just make private agreements, but the town has no ability to enforce a private agreement, whereas if you put it on the plan, there's a lot more, uh, there's a lot more confidence that it'll actually happen. If that's okay with you? you put that on the plan, either the, sh the fencing, the shrubbery, whatever the agreement is between the two? Sure. So we'll work with the hams and make sure that it's um, something that they wish, and we'll have it on the plans. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, public hearings close. I will open it now back to the board on, yes, Lane. Um, my question would be, this is a private road. And my understanding is that to make it a public road, the roadway would have to be widened, even though at this point we're being asked to approve it as a narrower road. And in this context, it probably makes sense. It seems to me, though, that although there are no current plans with respect to the bog slot here, that we should limit this approval to a roadway serving only two lots or two residences one being the ham property, which is shown on the plan, and a single residence on the bog slot. Because were that bog slot to be subdivided, I would think we would need to reconsider whether this narrowed roadway is or is not appropriate. So I would just consider that as a condition of the approval and want to ask the applicant if they would object to that at this point. Would you? Is this? Liza, is this a follow-up for the applicant also? Well, on Elaine's point. Prior to the applicant speaking? Sure. sure. Um, just briefly, Thank I you. think that um, the house on the other side of the road from the hams is subdividable. And, um, are you suggesting limiting their rights to use the road? We're being Elaine. asked to approve a narrow road on the understanding that it's serving two houses. I think if this road is starting to serve more than two residences, we would need to take another look at whether this narrow of a road is or is not appropriate. If this I, I know you had mentioned the subdividing, the further subdividing of the bogs land, but or there's any another other, lot. I, or any other, I mean, I would, I would say this is approved to serve two residences. And I think we would want to name the residences that we've been that the road is depicted as serving. It would be a single one back on the bog slot, and the road is actually shown now giving access to the ham lot. So I think we would want to name that too because that's what we're approving, not a second house on what, I sh what shows as the prior lot or a further subdivision of the bog slot. Yeah, I, I personally feel like it would be unfair to the, the other abutters that would bear the nuisance of having a road next to them and then not um, have access, easy access to then having the benefits of that road front frontage. Um, can the I Julianne M. Pryor revocable trust lot. So it's just my, my opinion. I just say fairness, it seems. Can I get, um, Maureen, can you explain about um, that, the, the second lot on Pryor property? And if, if you looked at the original subdivision plan from the 1900s, you'll see that this prior lot, which is on the left side, is actually three lots. Is it? So, and it's shown as one lot on the assessing maps because it's easier to, I mean, there are lots of reasons why you would want to send one tax bill as opposed to three tax bills. Let's just leave it at that. Um, but if at some point in the future, the owners or future owners of the prior lot wanted to resurrect those other lots, they might be able to do that. And that was one of the reasons this applicant was advised to go with a private, act, private road approval instead of a private access way. Because 
then it provide it was it was the the chair said to me earlier what can we do to look to the future on these applications mm -hmm. and the way we would look to the future in this application in my opinion is to ask the applicant to do a little bit more with the expectation that something would happen on that road other than just driveway to the back lot and if you require them to place the road basically in the middle of the right of way and you require a decent gravel base and you require them to build it at a standard that you've allowed in the past to access multiple lots you are laying out a roadway that probably can serve additional lots with no more construction of that road obviously if this road were in my opinion if if this road was going to become the support road for subdivision and a subdivision is three or more lots in a five-year period as long as you don't take advantage of any exemptions then the board would end up seeing it again anyway and at that point you could say okay we allowed a 14 foot wide travel way with two foot wide gravel shoulders before but now that there's another 10 lots accessing it we think we need to upgrade it um, but for now it's being proposed as a private road 14 feet wide surface two foot wide gravel shoulders on either side that's an 18 foot wide width which is the standard width that our our ladder truck um, and our fire chief finds acceptable with the standard turnaround at the end of the road so this was designed to serve more than one lot as it's currently proposed. So Maureen, how many lots could it potentially serve without coming back to the planning board? It seems like you have the three on the prior lot, the ham, and then the box lot, right. which could be subdivided once. once. Right. So one, two, three, uh, three additional houses in addition to the ham house and Right. And there's no, when you have, you have private roads that serve multiple lots. There's no, there's no limit in the ordinance on how many lots can be served by a private road. The limits are based on whether or not a road is a dead end road. That's where you have limits on the length of a road and on the number of houses that can be on a dead end road. I'm counting eight lots that would be served. If, if looking at the old subdivision camp, plan, I actually count eight, eight lots and not in shown here. And I guess the question I was ask, would ask you, the information we have talks about this road serving two residences. It's not clear to me that we have asked the town engineer to tell us whether the road, I mean, a, a pri it is a private road, but it's a reduced width private road. Have we asked the town engineer whether this road as it's done is sufficient to serve eight residences because otherwise I, I would still be inclined to say that any perhaps a better way to put it would be any new lot created that is not already depicted on this old subdivision plan so that would grandfather there eight lots or there more lots? Oh, I'm counting I'm looking at the old subdivision plan oh. and I'm counting one two three four five six lots okay. numbered yeah. subdivision lots around along the road the bog slot in the back and the ham lot to the right. So that's eight. And I don't think we asked the town engineer about eight lots. Could it be that there once were six and now there are three? Yeah, because they seem Without very small, don't at, they? At the title of all those lots and determining how they were owned and then resold. I would think that all of the lots shown on the subdivision plan are still potentially valid lots. Yeah. I think we have to make that assumption. I'm sorry, I just have a question. I'm Stephanie Boggs, and I'm just, I'm not sure which the eight lots are. I'd like if someone could show me what they're seeing. Sir? Do you have the old subdivision plan? Yes. Okay. I'm counting. Okay. This is Elizabeth Road. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Seven. And the hams are over here. Eight. Right. right. Except that this lot has its own road. Already has a driveway on the Trinity Road. And the hams are really only using this this lot of the hams is only using the front part of the road. So which is already eight. Right. Okay. Uh, hold on. Um, yeah, would you like to approach at the podium?
<laughs> Thank you. If I'm if if I'm referring to the same map, you are. Yes, we are the, looking at the same map. Correct. Um, uh, the way I'm looking at the lots, Reef Road cuts through three of those lots. So um, without showing you, it's, I can't, there's no um, picture up there. I know what you're saying. He, the, the original subdivision plan you're looking at, if you look at Reef Road, it actually has been realigned to the north. So some of, there's not six lots on Elizabeth Road. So you're eliminating three of those lots. So it's three on the priors, the hams, and the bog slot in the back. Is that how it looks? You can confirm yes. that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I met with uh, John Mitchell. We looked at the measurements. We were, and actually, I believe I met with your attorney, and it was the general consensus that at some point between this original recording and now, um, Reef Road has migrated to the north. So is the existing house on lot 123 on this old site plan, is that what you're saying, the existing um, prior house? The existing prior house is probably at lot, One yeah, right around 123. Okay. So then that would make sense that Trendy Road actually just kind of blasting through there. And it seems to me we would need to clarify that when we're approving Elizabeth Road as a private road, we're really not approving the entire Elizabeth Road as shown on this map. We're only approving the portion of it from lot 123 towards the Boggs parcel. Because other, there's no other basis that I'm aware of for defining what Elizabeth Road is other than this subdivision map, unless it's some, another map, uh, an amendment to the subdivision that I haven't seen. Yes, Maureen. Well, we do have a plan, and the applicant is only showing the road in a portion of Elizabeth Road. So we're not... So we would need to specify that what we're approving is a private road on a portion of Elizabeth Road. Or you could, you, you're only approving the portion, you're only approving the road that's shown on the plans. And if there's a portion of Elizabeth Road that exists south of, of Reef Road, then you would not be approving it because it's not shown on the plan you're approving. Right, but I think it's important that we specify that because otherwise I think it just makes for possible confusion when somebody later then comes back to the subdivision plan, which after all is the basis for the claim that there's a right to this road at all. Um, so we all, everything has to relate back to this subdivision plan. So I think it's important to note that what we're talking about is only a portion of Elizabeth Road as shown on that subdivision plan, since that's the legal basis asserted for the right in the first place. If we... Uh, well, I think we can easily do. Yeah. I think I, we think we can easily do it by, by an amendment, but now that I understand that, that we're doing, we're not, it's not as easy as looking at the subdivision plan and saying that's what we're doing. I think we need to be very clear about that. Okay, we could possibly make a motion just to clarify. We could do that, right. Okay. All right. If I may, you know, since yes. I'm just coming into this project, I was just talking with Steph, and it appears that there must have been a, there is an amended plan that shows that change in Reef Road. The documentation that was provided to the board was to clarify that this parcel, parcel had access via the original subdivision over Elizabeth Road. So what we can do is get to that updated information so it's clear in terms of where the lots in question uh, that were raised, uh, where Reef Road actually falls so that you can see what the clarity is on that so you don't have to get into language that really isn't pertinent to what your concern is. If that would be helpful yes. to have okay. that. Yes, done. I agree. Yes. I thought that any rights that would be created for the benefit of the applicant would be what is shown on this plan. And I realize the subdivision plan has independent existence, and it may be relevant to talk about rights over Elizabeth Road, but any rights uh, that are created by this application are really what's shown in this plan. So they really begin the, on what's now Reef Road, regardless of what the subdivision plan shows. And if I read it correctly, they dead end on the Boggs lot. So any further revision of the Bob's lot wouldn't 
be helped. Well, it would have to. They'd have to come back because this this private uh, road stops right at the at the Boggs Log border. So if that gets subdivided, you have to build further roadway into the Boggs lot, and that requires a further application. I guess I make the point only because I'm not as I'm not understanding Elaine and Liza's concern about a proliferation of lots that would be served uh, on this particular piece of real estate that we're now talking about. I guess my concern is I want to make it absolutely clear that we're not saying that this is an adequate road to serve more lots that are currently shown here because even though certainly they would have to come back to us again, that's basically all we're acknowledging. That yes, it, that, that what we're approving is a reduced width to a private road, but we're approving a reduced width private road on the understanding that we're approving it only for the lots that are currently shown on the plan. And to make it abundantly clear that not only would a new subdivision need new internal roads, but the question is very much on the table whether this Elizabeth Road might also need to be widened in connection with a future subdivision. Because once people get a road in there, nobody wants to widen a road once it's there. And I just think it's important for us to make it absolutely clear that if there's a new subdivision back here, that widening this road within whatever the bounds are of the current easement width, and I don't know what those easement widths are, it's not really shown here all that clearly, that that, that might need to happen. Are you concerned about the prior lot being chopped up in the three pieces? Um, the prior lot, no, not, I, I'm actually looking at the Boggs lot and the ham lot. The, and, I, and I actually can't tell here what the boundaries of the ham lot are. We don't have that information. And I don't know how, into how many lots it could be subdivided. But since the entire ham parcel arguably could claim lots going back a distance that's unspecified, um, I have some real issues creating road rights based on this subdivision plan, which has no exterior boundaries, and I just think it's very clear. I think we need to be particularly clear in terms of what we're saying and what we're not saying. I don't think it affects the current applicants at all, but I think it's important when people then come back to our approval that we were clear that we're approving a narrow road, but we're approving this narrow road on, for a single residence back on that, on that um, Boggs lot, not for multiple residences, because the Boggses are telling us they don't even plan to build the road yet. And it's clearly large enough to be subdivided quite, subdivided quite a bit. I just think it's important that we're clear. Then you are, um, it, it, it almost sounded to me that you were limiting it, just saying uh, this, what we're proposing, this proposed um, private road would be good enough for one house lot on the bogs and it would serve the um, current dwelling on the ham lot but no other. Well what I'm so. saying is um, now that I'm still not totally clear how many lots are shown here. I guess if I understand where Reef Road comes through and the new subdivision plan we don't have in front of us will clarify we're down to five current lots. So I think the way I would phrase it with that additional information is that we're approving this road um, in connection with this application, but that um, in the event any new lots are created, that, any, that no newly created lot um, is necessarily given rights on this road. I'd have to think about exactly how to word it, and my sense is we may want to have, we're going to need another meeting on this anyway. But between now and the next meeting, I would figure out how to say that, that, that this approval is with respect to the lots shown on the subdivision plan, and any newly created lot is not given rights in this road, and that it, it may not be an adequate road for access to additional lots depending on how many are created, is the idea. Does that get to a little bit closer to what you were talking about, Liza, is that you don't necessarily looking to exclude the priors, but when she was sounded like she was including only the hams in the box? Yes, because the priors wouldn't be creating new lots. They already have three. 
my understanding so. was that the priors didn't care about the road that they had access otherwise, but yeah. I don't think we need to go there. Then some kind of wording that does not exclude the priors while just including um, the bog lot and the ham lot. Or we could add some wording about any new dwellings instead of saying creation of lots because the lots are already created. Uh, you could, say, you could say dwellings. Maureen, and the, would you like and there are different <laughs> kinds of access. I mean, everybody on this road has access to the lot. The kind of access, I mean, everyone in the subdivision has some access to the road. The kind of access I'm talking about is primary road access, the way that the fire truck gets to your house, the way that the ambulance gets to your house. And I think when the engineer looked at this road, he was thinking about the ambulance and the fire truck maybe having to serve two or three lots. In fact, the applicant said two. So if the ambulance and the fire truck are getting to six new subdivision lots, I don't think we've been, I think it may be a different question. And that question has not been put to us, and I don't think that question has been considered by the town engineer. Any more comment? Um, the applicant is, would you like to address? I guess I'd like to clarify a couple of things. One, and Maureen may or may not be able to answer this, is the prior lot taxed as more than one parcel? Oh, yes. It's it being is. taxed as one parcel, but under our ordinance, they could break out those lots of record at okay. any time, okay. as long as they meet other requirements. All right. I just want to clarify that one. And then the other is the, uh, the Boggs parcel, mm -hmm. given the uh, proximity to the, the RP1, our uh, buffer area in the back probably could not meet the minimum lot requirements to achieve two eighty thousand square foot lots so there's a question on that as to whether or not that could be i guess the question i'm throwing out and i understand elaine's concern uh and i know i've done a number of private roads in this town in terms of that have served at least three if not four lots and that the viability of the road being built to essentially a town standard as far as constructability to support the number of trips and types of vehicles that travel it. It's been designed to meet that criteria. In terms of traffic volume, if that's what your concern is, again, even if this wound up with three additional lots on here, the amount of traffic coming through being supported by a 14-foot wide road is not as significant. If you were looking at eight or 16 lots or something back there, yes, you would definitely want to be looking something wider. But the feasibility of what could actually occur back in here, I think, is negligible in terms of being able to get access out to onto this private road so uh, could we possibly just uh, ask because this will probably come back next month could we just ask the engineer the town engineer would a you're building a private road but you're building it to a private access way standard in terms of the width but in terms of the support and the engineering structure of the road it's being built as if it were meeting the town road standards in terms of constructability is what i'm getting possibly at. we could bring this back to the town engineer and pose the question to the town engineer, hear what the town engineer has to say, and if there is a need for additional language to address that, then we could add it. Maybe he'll make a suggestion. Um, would that be okay if we brought it back? And I mean, I think we could, but we're asking the town engineer to speculate. The town engineer doesn't know because the, the, um, the, the, the applicant is not discussing the possible subdivision of that lot. So could it be divided into three lots? Could it be divided into five? Is the topography of the lot such that it could never be divided into more than two? We don't know, so we'd be giving the town engineer a very hypothetical question. So it, it just seems to me a fairly easy thing simply to say that we're approving it for a single residence on the Boggs lot. And if there are new lots created, and or additional residences, we haven't addressed that question yet. Okay. And just making it abundantly clear that we have not addressed that question. Okay, so now we're down to just one dwelling unit on the Boggs lot. One dwelling there. on the Boggs lot, and, and I guess since we are being asked to approve a roadway going to the Ham lot, I guess we'd say one dwelling there too, because that's explicitly being shown as part of what we're approving. So even though the hams are not an applicant, it's a little awkward to have the road shown as access to their lot. But we're showing that, we're approving a road that is explicitly shown to give access to two residences, 
doesn't say anything about the prior lot. We're approving two access points, and I think we need it. That's all we're approving, and I think it's appropriate to say that. Okay, so we have an addition. Uh, the, the ham lot is there. So we, and they actually, uh, it's not on the shore acre map, so I can't tell you what they own, how far back, and it's not on here. So we don't no. know if they can subdivide either. So but our maybe some language that talks about one dwelling unit on the bogs and the existing dwelling unit on the ham lot. Something That's all we've been asked to take a look at. Okay, maybe some type of language like that. Well, what are the others? Yes. What if we ask the applicant to show the other two lots on the prior property? Because um, it seems unnecessary to restrict those two lots from having access via this new roadway. It seems like the roadway can support four lots fairly easily. But we don't know where the, the roadway would be. We have no idea where a house might be sited on those lots. If I okay. Yes. And we're, act we're being asked to, pro pro to approve a specific roadway accessing an existing house on the ham lot. Uh, currently, the ham, ham parcel has access over Elizabeth right now. That's where their driveway is. It currently goes over it. So basically what that modification is, is to give them direct access on Elizabeth, which basically is no different than what they have now getting out to Reef Road. In regards to wanting to know where the pro property line is, well, it's not a survey line. I believe this was probably taken from tax records and I can't be 100% sure. That appears to be the lot line to the rear of the Hams parcel. And then this parcel appears identified as a Nichols property. So there is, excuse me, you do own that one, even though the tax rate. Okay, so, so that's also an existing lot. And do you have access to that? From, I mean, as far as your access other than through your lot. It's just been added to their lot. Okay. okay. Yes, Maureen. I, I hear what Lenny Remember Fallender is saying, but when you have a road adjacent to your property line, you can acquire access frontage for that road. It's completely separate from whether you have the right to a private road. But to approve a private road and then say that certain lots don't, can't count it towards their road frontage um, is inconsistent with the, the provisions in the zoning ordinance. We allow people to build these private roads and then other people can come in and claim frontage compliance using those roads. So to, to tell the prior lots they can't use that road um, is, is inconsistent with our ordinance. And further, We haven't told them we, they can't. Well, we just haven't told them that they can't. Right, but the thing is, if this was a brand new subdivision, you would approve the construction of the road in the right of way. You would not approve, you would not approve the individual driveways that connect to that, that road. So there's nothing that you would get for information for the prior lots that you're not already getting right now. So then we're back to any newly created lots. Yeah, that seems much more useful and straightforward. Okay. I don't really care one way or another about the prior lots. It's just that we're given very specific road that we're approving with very specific access points, whether we have to have them or we don't have to have them. We've got them. So, the, the other thing, excuse me, with the bog slot is that they're not creating enough frontage for two lots anyway. So they would have to, if they were able, and, and, and Mr. Matt Calf brought up the question of whether the bog slot can, can be divided in such a manner to meet the ordinance requirements, and we haven't been able to answer that question. Um, there are, that, that lot is encumbered by some wetlands. But even if it could be divided, there's not enough frontage that's being created by the turnaround to support two lots. So they would have to come back anyway for any kind of division of that lot. All I'm asking is so that we state that. I'm not changing anything. I just think it's important that we state it. How about stating it using that type of language then right. without discussing um, any perceived limitations on any other lots around there would just state that's why I was trying to say says. what we were approving, not, not anything <clears throat> we weren't approving. Um, 
So we'll go with some language that's in the ordinance about uh, frontage and what can or cannot, and it'll, then it'll be clear that there is not the frontage there for one, more than one building block. I guess I would go back to thinking that probably the best way to do it is saying that we're approving this road in connection with the lots, the existing lots shown on the subdivision plan as amended by the one we haven't seen yet, um, and leave it at that. Why did you say we're approving on the lots shown on this plan? Well, apparently this plan has been amended, well, and we're approving it with respect to the portion of Elizabeth, not the whole of Elizabeth Road, but only the portion of Elizabeth Road that's shown on a plan that we don't have in front of us. So obviously we need to see the plan. And that doesn't have anything to do with what we're approving here. It does. They, 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 the, the property coincides, but all we're doing is approving certain actions with respect to the road to be built on Elizabeth. I think it creates, I think because of the old subdivision plan, it creates a real question in the future as to what we've approved and what we haven't approved and what and when we say the words Elizabeth Road, what do we mean? I just think it's, it's so much easier and it, it, avoids so much, it avoids possible questions in the future by correctly referring to the plans that we intend to be referring to because Elizabeth Road is, is kind of an undefined thing. I think you're right if you, had to, if you had to argue what it was that we had approved that it would be limited to these plans. But, what are we just but nonetheless, I think it's because all of the rights here are derived from a subdivision plan, I think we need to reference the subdivision plan. And we ought to be referencing with the correct one, which is this one as it's been amended. And I think we need to have it in front of us. But I, think it's, I don't think any of this is difficult. I just think it's a matter of our being very clear what we're doing and anyone who comes after us to take a look at it being very clear as to what we've done and what we haven't done. I don't think none of this is difficult and none of it's expensive at all. I, I do believe, didn't the applicant at one time say something to the fact that you would try to come back with the type of documentation Elaine is looking for to just to clarify the points that she's making so that we don't have to possibly make any type of motion? As I understand that there is a, div a redivision or an updated subdivision plan, that we will get that information to clarify where the lots are left on the priors. And it will demonstrate where potential redevelop additional development could occur. Maureen's point about not having enough road frontage to even add a second lot on the uh, the Boggs property would probably fall into the same thing with the rear part portion of the Hams property. If they don't have access to a particular road, they would also need frontage if Maureen would correct me on that as well. The, so. the, the challenge with the Ham lot is that I believe that if you look at all the land they have right now, they don't have enough land to divide it into another lot that's a brand new lot to meet mm -hmm. the RA district standards. Uh, if they have a, a lot of record, it's a little different, but I think I looked, and even that's not really an option for them at this point. Okay. So I don't think there's a lot of development potential on the east side of Elizabeth Road, and the only development potential is the existing prior lots on the west side, and potentially one more lot on the Boggs lot. And again, you would need to extend the road to get the frontage anyway. Okay, so we can wait till we're going to have a, a newer plan in front of us next mm -hmm. month, and we'll but, take it from there. Anyone like to add to that about what they would like to see on any new plans or to help clarify this issue? Okay, yes. The town has the updated subdivision plan that shows Reef Road and the, you know, with, with Reef, redirection of, of Reef that's with the um, surveys of the, the bog slot, the ham lot, the prior lot. So that is with the town. I don't know why you don't have it in front of you. Usually the applicant presents to us. So if uh, Mr. Metcalf would present to us, if that's a possibility, and he could certainly come in and reference any, any information that we have in town hall. 
Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not Liza. I'm sorry, I missed that. Could you clarify what we're expecting to receive? Yes. Um, I'm trying to, you know, what Elaine is expecting to receive is just maybe show on a map that we will have before us that is more up to date than a map from 1911. A, a map that may show how the prior's lots are subdivided, well, um, the three lots that make up the prior lot, as we or call it. the new it. location of Elizabeth Road, whatever the difference is here. Or any documentation showing how Elizabeth Road was changed when Reef Road was changed, right. or any documentation in regards to the, the ham lot also? Um, not particularly. Not We're not looking lot. for doc documentation of the ham lot. The okay. hams are not in front of us, other than okay. a, a representation of an existing condition. The hams are not in front of us, nor is the property that we show here is the Elizabeth Nichols Trust Lot. That property is not in front of us either. And I don't think it's appropriate for us to make any assumptions one way or the other about its potential future development. That's really not in front of us. But the prior you do want to see? I want to see the subdivision plan because that's what, for the town's purposes, that's what exists. Um, and I think the other thing we need to see, I'm just looking at the proposed um, language here, but. I think we want to see Elizabeth Road as it currently exists, and, and I'm not sure that Elizabeth Road is not really labeled. Well, it may be here. No, on the plans that we've got, I'm not even sure it's ever labeled Elizabeth Road. So The paper street that is the portion which is Elizabeth is that portion right there that we're talking about. Right. But yeah. the only thing we have that has the name Elizabeth Road on it is, is that the plan that you're now the telling us is not accurate. Well, again, that was submitted in order to substantiate the fact that it was part of the original right. subdivision. So we just need, we need that. And the other thing I guess we would want to see is whatever agreement the applicant is making with the abutters about um, <coughs> buffering or, or fencing or whatever else. That also would be something we would want to see. Does that answer your question as far as what we are, we'll be looking at next month? What we can yes, see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions about this application? Um, I just had a um, one note. You are going to be changing the plans. So um, on sheet number two, and when you change the plans, can you just change the from chairman to chair? And um, I take it that sheet number two is the one that's going to be um, sent over to um, the Ministry of Deeds instead of sheet number one? Yes, it would be sheet two. So it will be sheet two. Um, is the location now? Okay, location I thought that was me for a minute. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. My planning board members do it all the time anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is the location map normally something that I, needs to go on? It doesn't to... have to go on. And I honestly don't really remember seeing it on subdivision plats typically. <laughs> okay. And that's why we focus so hard on the title box. Because that, that information in the title box is supposed to help you find it. Okay, so but this I, will I'll, be... Uh, I'm going to look at Mr. Metcalf and ask him to uh, make some judgment on whether the location map should be on the recording plan or not. I'm sure we can probably fit it on there. Okay, thank you. The, yes, they are supposed to do some monumentation and... I know we had a conversation about monumentation. Let's see. How about we agree that we'll make sure it's on here next time if it's not on here right now? I, I know we have talked about it. Okay, I have a question too. Yes. Um, I see on um, page five there's a nice cross section of the rain garden, mm -hmm. but I did not see where it was um, 
on the other piece of the plan, I, I would have, it probably Grading is one. on sheet two, and I would expect to see it there under grading and drainage plan, but I didn't, didn't pop out to me. Where you look at the layout plan. Those are little. They are, okay. And then they also, re um, and they also reflect on the, the grading plan as well. All right, cool. I was guessing that that was the, the grain gardens, but I didn't see it labeled. Okay, we can change that. We have right. the labels on it. Thanks. Yes, Wayne. Whatever page is intended to be recorded should also reference the subdivision plan and the amended subdivision plan and their recording information. And Elizabeth Road should be labeled as such. They're actually changing the name of it. Okay. Um, oh, at, at, okay. with, well, with the, rec I believe it's with the um, if not the request, with the approval of the police chief, because he's also the E911 coordinator and the addressing officer, and they like to have names that don't sound like other names. And so we have Elizabeth Park and Elizabeth Farms, and they don't want Elizabeth Road, too. Then in that case, there should be a note on the plan that's saying that Dolores Road, or whatever you're going to name it, is intended to be the same right-of-way or um, reserved way that is labeled as Elizabeth Road on the reference subdivision plans because otherwise it's going to be pretty confusing. Anyone else on the board have any additional comments to add at this time? Um, I'd like to have a site walk. Yes, okay. So we've answered all the other questions. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about site walk then. Liza would like a site walk. Would anyone else like a site walk? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get you guys out there? No one else would like a site walk? <laughs> Liza, what were you looking for? We would have I, I was thinking it would be really interesting to have the updated subdivision plan um, and um, walk the site, but I was um, very, also very interested in the grading and the fact that they're asking for a waiver on the grading and to um, look at the, just look at the topography and ask questions around would the fire truck be able to get up a steep beginning part of the driveway. What does that look like? That steep gradient, you probably you probably wouldn't even notice it. Yeah. It's just, I mean, a three percent grade that we're looking at is practically flat. Yeah. And then the increased gradient that goes up is not that significant. That vehicles can't you can't exceed your design standards anyway, as far as fire equipment is concerned. Yeah. Or okay. vehicle yeah. transport. We recently had that issue. What percent grade was that? Do you guys remember? Well, it, was, it was well in excess of five, and it was that angle of departure. Yeah. Fire chief has looked at this with the town engineer, and they have no concerns. Okay. About All right. Good. Okay. Do we have a fire chief letter? No, we do not. Can we get that? Is that? I can ask him for one. That'd be good as long as he's looked at it anyway. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> would that help? Yeah, that would help. Sure yeah. You're going to be able to get that site work. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, and then I mean, I was also curious to know. Would it be possible to access your lot from your other lot and to sort of look at that too? Although we're not really mandated to look at, is there I don't know, a less intrusive way to create access, are we? Um, that was a good question. That's a question that I was wondering because we are basically, we're calling it a private road, but it's an access way standards. And so I was wondering, could we put an access way possibly here on Overlook Lane? Right. So I also had that same question, and I was wondering would a site walk help me? And then I um, did ch have a chance to talk to Maureen about, I wanted to see is, is this good planning? Is this good planning to try to possibly not develop Elizabeth Way instead of go with an access way. Right. And so I had a conversation, Maureen, would you like to, some of the points that you made with me and sure. about the whole, is this good plan? There were, the answer is this area of town, there were a lot more roads originally recorded in this part of town. 
And in 90-91, Bayview Road was uh, vacated, which runs along the southern edge of this lot. And in 2004, um, a portion of Wombeck was uh, vacated and a portion of Katahdin was vacated. And at one point, Elizabeth Road was on the list to be vacated. And Dr. Mehta wrote to the planning board and said, please do not vacate Elizabeth Road because you already took away Bayview. He said it much nicer than I am. And we, are, we want Elizabeth Road to be preserved as access for our back lot. And the council respected his request and they did not, they did not vacate Elizabeth Road. So my, my suggestion is that the long, the, the history of what the town has done in street vacations in this area really has left Elizabeth Road as the one place to create access to this back lot. All those other places are gone. Okay, because yeah, that was my next question is why not Wombach Road, but that's gone. been vacated. All right, so it's no longer. I had the same question and then I was asking, well, um, it was vacated, so 25 feet would have gone to the applicant. And I was then told that we need to have a right of way of at least 50 feet and that we don't like to reduce it much more. 40 would be the limit. And I was also trying to go down that right. you know, path. And I could see that it really wasn't working as far as good planning goes. Yep. And also some of the other th questions that have been brought up tonight is what if there are is some more development by the priors or, you know, as far as that goes, yep. then you're looking at an opening here that wasn't, that was vacated, another opening up here. So in the end, I made the decision, but I could see why you're asking for the site walk to possibly look at that. But that was my decision that I made that this is probably the best way to go. Yeah, good. I'm glad you looked at it. We were thinking on the same lines. Yeah. Um, but does anyone else, after this discussion, now want to go back for a site walk, or does that clarify, or? Nope. Oh. Okay. That'll answer our site walk. Then, um, would anyone like to um, make a motion as far as um, whether or not we're going to have a public hearing next month? All right. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Um, motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based upon the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stephanie Boggs for a private road to be constructed within the paper street of Elizabeth Road, located off of Reef Road, to create access to a back lot located at the end of Elizabeth Road, be tabled to the regular November 19, 2013 meeting, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Thank you, Liza. Do we have a second? Second by Joe. Okay, all those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, we will see you again next month. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you do have any questions about what you heard, Maureen took very good notes. and We took notes. Here. I know Maureen takes exceptional notes. And <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Maureen, I can't get out of this thing. Okay, the next item on our agenda is 303 Ocean House Road Site Plan Amendment. Jennifer DeSena is requesting an amendment to the site plan approved in August 1988 for office space located at 303 Ocean House Road. The amendment would raise the roof line of an existing connector between the office and the house. The application will be reviewed for compliance with sections 19-9 Site Plan Regulations in section 19-6-4 town center design standards. The application will be addressed in the following format. There will be an introduction of the item to the board by the town planner, followed by a presentation by the applicant. 
the public um, is welcome to comment on completeness of the amendment, and then the board will discuss whether sufficient information has been provided to consider the amendment. The public is then welcome to comment on the merits of the amendment, and this will be followed by a discussion from the board on the application, including a decision on a site walk and a public hearing. And then we'll conclude with a motion for the board to consider. Maureen, would you like to give the board an overview, please? Sure. Um, this site at 303 Ocean House Road received site plan approval from the planning board in 1988. There was a subsequent amendment in 2004. Four, I believe, where they changed the use from what was approved to a retail use. Um, this applicant is triggering an amendment to the original approval because she is changing the, um, the exterior structure of the building. It's basically a single family home with a, a garage that's being used as office space and there's a connector that has been constructed between the garage and the house and she is going to elevate the roof of the connector so it's at the same level and um, slope of the garage. There would be no changes to the footprint. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Did you enjoy the last one? This one should be much quieter. <laughs> this, okay, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> would you like to give the board a review of the application? Oh, sure. Um, I have one quick question. I have this survey, do you want me to hang it up here, pass it around? What? Um, would, can the board see it if it was hung up? Or you want me to just <laughs> pass it around? Just hang it up. Um, hanging it up, we'll, hanging we'll try it that. Okay. Yeah, if you want, the push pins are fine. Are there any up there, the push pins? If that's too hard, push pins. I see it going through the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, for the public record, you do need to identify yourself. Yes, I will. Um, my name is Jennifer DeSena. I live at 4 Ivy Road, and I'm here tonight to request an amendment to the site plan approved in August of 1988 for the office space that's located at 303 Ocean House Road. And I have posted a survey of the property that I had done this summer. Um, the amendment um, what would allow me to raise the roof line of approximately eight feet of a connector that ex currently exists between the office space and the house. To do this, um, to raise that roof line would provide interior space um, because right now that ceiling is quite low. and. Uh, the change in the roof line would require a change in two windows that are currently located on the north side of the house. And I believe you have drawings um, indicating what that would look like, what those changes would look like. Um, I'm also intending to install additional windows on the exterior office walls and will be replacing any siding and roofing disrupted by this renovation with materials similar to what's there now. Um, and that would be, it's wood shingled on the office space right now, so it would be wood shingles again on the office space. And I actually would be re-roofing the entire roof so it doesn't appear to be, you know, a patch job. Um, and let me see. Um, there are no changes at all to the footprint of the existing building. And I am asking for approval tonight as I currently have a contractor who's ready to roll <laughs> and they're hard to come by. Um, I mean, he can do some work on the interior, but um, ideally I'd like to get the exterior done before the interior given the season that we are in. Um, and if you have any questions. Okay, um, at this time I would open it for public comment. For the record, um, there is no one left in the town hall. So, um, does the board have any questions for the applicant? No, thank you for providing those drawings. They were helpful. Oh, well, you're welcome. And actually, I think we're supposed to be looking at completeness. My apologies, not the oh. parts. Um, then, does the board have any questions in regards to completeness? 
on this item. Um, do we need? We just needed a general incompleteness. I think we just needed a general agreement without a formal vote. But any, no one has any questions on completeness. Okay, I just I should have done that first. All right. Um, any comments for the applicant? Any questions? Was the, was the, I have now looked at the building, mm -hmm. and it is really overgrown in the front. And I know you were going to trim right. the lilacs, which I, I think would be great. But did, do we have any issues with that, given what was in the original site plan, plan or anything? Would, uh, I didn't. Does the applicant need to ask? The original plan, I think, in that area just has lilacs, Yeah, I believe. I believe the applicant said she was going to trim, not remove. Right. right. Yeah. We usually don't regulate whether you're maintaining existing landscaping. Okay. Yeah. But all right. Great. So, I can make a motion. Okay. Um, so no sidewalk, and and we're not going to hold a public hearing just to confirm with the rest of the board members. Okay. Okay, then Liza, moving forward. I agree. So, um, findings of fact Jennifer DeSena is requesting an amendment to the site plan approved in August 1988 for office space located at 303 Ocean House Road to raise the roof line of an existing connector between the office and house, which requires review under Section 19 9 site plan regulations. Number two, the 1988 site plan approval includes plans showing the second floor addition to the garage, which was not constructed. Number three, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-6-4 town center design standards subject to the submission of information referenced in number two above. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jennifer DeSena for an amendment to the site plan approved in August 1988 for office space located at 303 Ocean House Road to raise the roof line of an existing connector between the office and house be approved subject to the following condition. One, that the elevation submitted as part of this amendment replaced the elevation submitted in 1988, specifically eliminating the second floor addition to the office building, which was depicted on the 1988 elevations, but not constructed. Um, do we have a second or any? Can I suggest one amendment to the condition? Yes. Yeah. Um, replace the elevations, I would say, in the 1988 site as it's written now, it talks about the elevation that were submitted, and it's going to be more appropriate to refer to the approved uh, uh, these, What we refer to above is the 1988 site plan approval. Are you saying that? I mean that the elevation submitted as part of this amendment replaced the elevations approved in 1988? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so it would read that the elevations submitted as part of this amendment replace the elevations in the 1988 site plan approval. Mm -hmm. It's just talking about what was approved, not what was submitted, which... Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Would anyone like to second at this time? Joe, second? Okay. Any discussion on... Oh, Elaine. Um, I just have a question because this is in the town center zone. I see that the cover letter that we have talks about the finished material being wood shingles. That doesn't actually show on the elevations. No. Should it or should it um, or is it sufficient that it be in the cover letter? Um, I actually discussed this with the applicant this afternoon and, and I told her that if this was a brand new building, we would expect elevations to note on the plan, on the elevation, the the materials that are going to be used. But because she did reference it in the cover letter, and the cover letter is part of the, based on the materials and other information submitted, that I think it's sufficient to require it. However, if you want the applicant to resubmit those with that noted, you can do that as well. If you if you think it's sufficient and that this kind of somehow gets stapled to this, so they stay together then that's fine okay okay then any further discussion all those in favor 
Those opposed? Okay. This does pass. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would you like me to close this? I'll take care of it. Okay. And the next item would be public comment. Once again, there is no one in chamber halls, so then we are at adjournment. Okay, and just noting before we adjourn that we are going to have a special planning board workshop on October 29th. We'll be talking about the normal high water line, and uh, that will be held at 7 o'clock in the uh, Jordan Conference Room, for the record. Okay, um, adjournment. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Elaine. A second. Discussion? No discussion? All in favor? We have adjourned. Thank you. Same time.